Hi, welcome to Wesley and Pat once again. After all our best of series, it's good to be back afresh with you. In my thinking today, I'm going to be talking about a group of people who wanted to see Jesus. We take a look together at how Wesley Mission is offering to help support mothers without extended families. And we welcome a man who's passionate about spreading the gospel alongside young people, and especially children. Andrew McDonough is the creator, writer and illustrator of the Lost Sheep series. His Christian curriculum has helped schools and churches cross language and cultural divides through his vibrant and varied sketches of colourful characters to help the stories of the Bible just come alive. The ministry is now celebrating its 25th year since the standout cartoon character Cecil was born. Andrew, it's really good to have you on the show. Oh, thanks for having me, Kate. Look, it, it, it's often the case, but many ministries and, and witnesses and works begin almost by accident. That's true here, isn't it? Uh, yes, it is. I was invited by a church to give a children's talk, and uh, I didn't know much about the Bible as a new Bible college student, and I had one gift, I could draw a sheep. So I drew up some sheep and shepherds on overhead projector slides, got to the church, and I, there was a huge crowd. I dropped the first picture of a shepherd in front and said, once there was a shepherd. And the crowd erupted with life and laughed. And so I put down the next slide and then there was a sheep. And I told the story and I was amazed at the response. And I thought there's something here in stories and also a gifting that I need to pursue. Look at that. That would be the old days when you put an OHP 1-1 one yes, one and then yeah. hoped it landed at just the right place. Yeah, a bit of, so put it down like this, turn it <laughs> around, put it the other way. <laughs> Look, but that ministry's grown, hasn't it, really? And, and that concept was formulated um, uh, it really in 2004 with new developments. Um, and, and, and you were, at the time, pastoring at Westcare. Tell us about that ministry. Um, Westcare's an inner city mission, so it's a community that have people who are homeless, people who are dealing with drug addictions, but it's also a church community, so we have our um, church people gather there as well. And um, the best picture of Westcare was, was I was taking a, a church service and we are doing the I am the vine, and so we had this big vine that we'd drawn up, and I had two children going around taking photos of everyone who was in the congregation. And then later on, they stuck them all on the vine to say, these are the people who are part of our church. And you look at the pictures, and there'll be people who are off the streets, people who are doctors, people who are engineers, but all together, and you couldn't often pick who's who. So that's my community, and that's what a lot of the West Care, uh, a lot of the, the uh, stories grow out of. Now, you spent a lot of years working with refugees, didn't you? That was important to you. Uh, yes. When I was at college again, I met... Um, another student called Wa, who he was a refugee from Vietnam. And uh, also I went and worked for the Vietnamese Refugee Association and uh, met people from all over the world. And I realised how much God loved these people and I loved working with them. And so that, that just continued to drive me. So uh, when I was writing Cecil, I had to drop in the name of Amir, one of the people who mm. I'd helped settle in Australia. And my favourite picture that I have up on my uh, board at home is this picture of Cecil the sheep drawn by Abdul, who's a four-year-old Afghani asylum seeker. And he gave that to me, and I think this is what it's about, the love of God going to all people and just celebrating and welcoming, welcoming Look, that, That's them. a lovely yeah. insight to the story, because so many people will pick these uh, uh, books, up, which are great, yeah. really, and they, they've got the wonderful story they tell for yes. children, but yeah. they perhaps won't know all of that background, which really does make it live, doesn't it, for you? Yes, yeah, yeah. How did you get all the names then, you know? Did they all come from people? Oh, uh, some, some come from people. There's some names that I just think are funny, like, so I don't know why, but I think the names Kevin, Trevor and Meredith are funny, so I use those. As long as there's no Kevin's Meredith uh, listening in. Oh, <laughs> that, no, they might be excited. I, <laughs> yes, I might give free books to people who have their name in them. <laughs> uh, and others, my kids, others I've grabbed people. Dave... Most of the people at West Care are called Dave. There's about eight Daves, so yeah, yeah, and help yeah. sell books to people I know. <laughs> Let, let's talk a little bit more in a moment about that ministry and how important it yes. is. But we're just going to stop there for a moment, and I'd like to introduce today's uh, performer. Tanya G is no stranger uh, to Wesley Impact. She hails originally from the Melbourne Gospel Choir's earlier days. She now sings solo across ministry conferences and churches throughout Australia. And we really like working with her. And I hope you're going to enjoy Write Your Story. <laughs>
Be inspired by Keith Garner's new book, The Authentic Australian Evangelist, Alan Walker. Former Superintendent Alan Walker was once labelled the conscience of the nation, speaking out for the marginalised and the broken across social, political and international debate. Alan's life and work at Wesley Mission is also featured in an address by Keith Garner on DVD. For more information, call 1800 021 821 or visit our website, wesleymission.org.au. Our website features the whole show all this week. And if you want to know more about Tanya Jean, details are also going to be online about her wonderful ministry. Now, Andrew, great to be back with you again. When, when Jesus um, ministered, one of, the, one of the, 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 if you like, the tools that he used to challenge people, to help change their lives with the parables and the stories that, that he used, Cecil has been used by God, and without any doubt, in a very clear way, across an amazing number. I think the figure was 50 different uh, countries. What do you love most about the work that you do? Oh, I love a few things. I, I, I love actually being able to use my gifts and draw. And I love being able to actually story tell, stand up and tell the stories. But I get really excited when I get an email from uh, Moldova, and I'm not even sure where that is, and there's Cecil up on the screen being mm. used, or to see someone who's drawn Cecil up and is using them at a, in a park in Sydney. And uh, when someone grabs our stories and then runs with them and uses them in their own way, in ways I didn't can't even think of that's when I get really excited and I suppose some of these countries there are some nuances that when they translate they yes, put it into yeah. their own kind of uh, uh, that's what we hope they, they will do when someone uses it in their own language or when I see people have drawn rather a cake to celebrate the end of Cecil there's this big bowl of rice that's when I get excited and go yes mm. they're using they're making it their story and it's not just ours that's fantastic. But of course, using the visual, using art, using yes, communication yeah. is not just for children, is it? Uh, no, that's true. It's interesting that Jesus talked to adults by using story. And we find that story often will get under the, um, just underneath to people who will have a barrier to facts and things. And sometimes you can touch people heart, people's hearts with a story. So that's why we use them. Sometimes I'm meant to be talking to the kids, but I'm actually have the adults inside. I mean, that combines two thoughts to, yes. to me. One is that we often overhear the gospel rather than directly. Yes, yeah. So that, that it doesn't surprise me. Yeah. In fact, in many churches yeah. um, where they do still have a children's feature, yes, yeah. some people say, some adults will even say, I enjoy the children's feature more than anything. Yes, yeah. I don't think that's just a slight on the preacher no no I mean it's a fact it's yes yeah uh, people actually listen to something and, and see it now you were involved very much in that back to church uh, uh, that Sunday in the UK uh, yes it, again that was um, we sort of fell into that where uh, back to church Sunday they needed some children's materials they asked us for that in Australia and said can we use this in the UK and uh, we looked at the material they had for kids and thought oh we can get Cecil to go over and help. So we wrote it all up and Cecil was used in about, I think it was a, um, a couple of thousand churches on uh, Sunday and each year he's been used there. So we try and see where we can link up with people who are doing things and go, here's a resource, run with it. That's fantastic. Now look, we're coming up to the, the, our, our lead up to each and I'm going to pinch one of these from oh, you, which, which is the- I'll even sign it for you. Oh, you that's like. fantastic. <laughs> that's Dave the donkey. Um, tell me how Dave the donkey can really help when people are trying to understand the, the, yeah. the, the story of the way of the cross. Yeah, um, telling the story of Easter to kids or adults is a challenge, it's so deep and complex. And so with Dave, um, we've written the story where there's a conversation between Dave, who carries Jesus into Jerusalem, and his grandfather. And Dave has in, a, in his mind what should have happened to Jesus, the king being welcomed by the people, the king, uh, being welcomed by the leaders and being placed on a throne and a crown on his head, where, while his grandpa donkey explains what happens to Jesus, um, mm. being rejected and going to the cross. Uh, so we used Dave just to explain the story of what should happen to the king and what really happened, hoping that then uh, people can grab that and take parts out for children rather than trying to explain the whole of the cross and the resurrection all in one go. Just in a sentence or two, yeah. what do you really want people to get out of your book? So, so you, so okay, you've written a book, yeah. you're public. What, what is it you really want them to get out of it? Um, the simple answer is Jesus and to see him in all that he is, understand more of his teaching and the breadth of what he's calling people to do. Also fun. Uh, 
we think the gospel is fun. It's serious, but it's fun. Uh, we also hope that people will be encouraged, and children especially, to, to, to run with following God and wherever that takes them. And when life gets messy and doesn't all fit together, that they can still work with faith. So we hope that um, our books will do that and inspire people through our stories. Andrew, it's been a delight to talk to you, to hear something of, of your story. And we wish you well oh, for thanks, all the Kate. new stories that are going to pour out of you in the years to come. We're going to be back in just a moment. It's been 200 years since the first Methodists met in Australia. To celebrate two centuries of faith and pioneering care, CEO and presenter Reverend Dr Keith Garner takes us back to where it all began. But we don't begin here at the heart of London. We begin in a town in the north of England. In this fascinating narrative, Reverend Garner chronicles the history of the life and times of the founder of Methodism, John Wesley. This fresh and thought-provoking documentary takes us on a journey throughout the United Kingdom, beginning in John Wesley's hometown of Epworth. John Wesley was born here on the 17th of June, 1703. This one-hour DVD travels on to his education years and beginnings of social justice in Oxford, to his final years in London. For more information on John Wesley, the man and his mission, call 02 9263 5555 or email us at impacttv at .org .au. As Andrew shared, it's important to use appropriate tools to help children develop and shine. Let's take a look together at a program that we call Wesley Family Services at Westlakes, north of Sydney. It's a service that supports children by teaching them literacy and numeracy skills crucial for child development to help them with that big transition when they go to that first day at school. My name is Louise and I'm the Program Coordinator for Wesley Family Services Westlakes. We actually support families with children under eight years of age and we do that in the way of family support, playgroups, parenting programs, uh, mums and bubs groups and we also do one-on-one -on -one home visiting. Generally we're looking at around 40 families a week would access the service. I heard about Wesley Mission running at the school here through another mother. Um, we thought it was just another play group, but we were so surprised when we turned up to have um, extra support. When I started coming, both of us would often end up in tears. Um, and then my daughter was diagnosed with ADHD and ODD and she became quite violent. Um, and it was just somewhere I could come and let my guard down and, and be myself. As Rennie grew older, Erin started to do our parenting program. So she did our 123 Magic and our Triple P, a positive parenting program, and then a, a recent one, a reflective parenting program. Through that, we've just watched Erin grow and develop as a mum, and she's so much more confident. In the three years, we've definitely got our confidence back and, and our sense of humour, <laughs> and we have a great time now. The whole objective behind what we do here at Wesley Mission is to provide or help make connections for families in the community so that they've got somebody that they can lean on, someone they can talk to. It becomes like a real family group for them. The other mothers, um, we're really close. We all enjoy catching up. Um, we see each other outside of playgroup now. We also understand each other a lot more, which is really important because we've all heard a bit about everyone's story and what everyone's been through. And you don't normally get that in, in a normal social environment, but in the, the environment that Wesley Mission provides, you know, the safe and um, you, can, you can talk without being judged. It's, um, it's, it's really helped build some wonderful friendships. I really, really love seeing the benefit that the mums have and knowing that, you know, just providing that little bit of support, it can strengthen them, it can help them be a better parent. We also have partnerships and one that um, is a great partnership running at the moment is with TAFE. So the mums are able to enrol in a TAFE course at the playgroup and they're just building up, you know, back to work skills. So they're gaining that along the way. 
without ongoing support, without the um, community supporting us, we wouldn't be able to continue to do the work that we do here. Families would miss out and they would have nowhere else to go. There is no other, other service like this out here. Without Wesley Mission and especially Louise and the support she's provided both myself and my child, um, we wouldn't be this happy, strong family unit that we are today. Yeah, life was miserable and, and, you know, it's good. Life's good. Some people who are referred in the New Testament as Greeks though that could be a more generic term for Gentiles, came to one of the disciples of Jesus, that's Philip, with a request. It's a very simple one. They wanted to see Jesus. It's a lovely phrase. We want to see Jesus. Let me read to you from John 12, 20 through to 30. Now, there were some Greeks among those who went up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, with a request. Sir, they said, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went to Andrew, Andrew and Philip in turn told Jesus. Jesus replied, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me will keep it for eternal life. They must follow me, and where I am, my servant also will be. My Father will honour the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very hour I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that was there and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said an angel had spoken to him. Jesus said, this voice was for your benefit, not mine. Now, we don't really know the full intention of this group of people when they came to Jesus. Perhaps they wanted to investigate the possibility of following. They came to Philip and others, and, and, and they realized that there was something there. We're told that Philip went to tell Andrew, and that Andrew, in turn, is involved in telling others who involved eventually in telling Jesus. What follows is an insight into where the real source of God's glory will be revealed. Jesus speaks about the hour having come and refers to the cross as his hour of glory. Now that's important because each of the Gospels have their own perspective. But John's Gospel always views the cross in the light of the resurrection. Glory and resurrection and cross are all bound together. When I began my ministry, I ministered in the city of Plymouth in Devon in the UK. And I had a, a, a member of, of the congregation, a lovely person who I used to visit regularly, who wrote a book from the context of verse 24, called The Corn of Wheat, actually, the book that she wrote. And it's this lovely thought, it's powerful, really. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. It's a marvellous picture of the mission of Christ in the light of the cross. Many people who didn't feel free to approach Jesus, and that was the case then, just as it is today, but all the folks were, were bold enough to make that approach. You see, these Greeks, or whoever they are, become in a real sense, a, a marvellous insight that Jesus is accessible. When I was at school as a boy, uh, I remember very early on in my education that we had a friend, uh, a gang of us together, who had a lazy eye, that was the term we used, and to strengthen the use of his eye, they covered up the eye that was the most able, so that the lazy eye would be made to work. In a sense, our lives depend 
upon our willingness to exercise our spiritual eyes. So, as we approach that wonderful time of Easter, as we approach him, we want the spiritual eyes to, just like those Greeks, desire to see Jesus. If you would like to know more about today's topic, or for more on Keith's message, contact Keith by writing to Wesley Mission, Post Office Box A5555, Sydney South 1235, or email impacttv at wesleymission.org.au. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to check out that wonderful new website and watch the show again if you want. We leave you with Steve McPherson singing Cornerstone. Until next week, goodbye and God bless you. Nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly trust in Jesus' name. Christ alone. Savior's love through the storm. He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide his face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. Christ alone, cornerstone, weak made strong in the sand.